call the meeting to order at 7.02. Um, is there anybody who would like to make any public comment at this time? Okay, then um, we're going to discuss the proposed Performing Arts Center, um, school safety, shop expansion, and HVAC improvement project, and the corresponding bond through performing contracting with energy efficient investments. So yes, um, let's discuss. Um, so what we need to do today is come up with a total amount for the bond and how we would like it to be structured as far as how many years, um, if we want to defer principal payments at all, um, and kind of come up with a plan for funding this project. So um, I wanted to see, I have a spreadsheet that um, has some scenarios that we could look at um, that are basically you know, I talked with Tara at the Finance Committee meeting on Monday about how the bonds would work and um, discuss some options and things there. So um, why don't I see if I'm going to try and join the meeting and then see if, if would I be able to present um, my computer screen to do that? Okay, let me try and join the meeting then. I have to mute myself. All right. All right, so let me see. So if I do present now, and I think I want some new to name this one. Well, you know me. I, she got nervous. I was going to give her a big hug. And then she was like, Jamie. I said, no, no. I just wanted to let you know. I said, I had to see you. She's doing all right. When is she going to go back to work? So it's supposed she to be presenting this. Uh, oh, no, yeah. She's going to be at the fair. I mean, not. Uh, okay, there it goes. It's, you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. Oh. I'll just see if I can make it's it a little bigger. Um, She's not totally blown, so not totally coming again to the shoulders. I think she had surgery. Yeah. Let's see if I can. It sounded like such a painful pain. I think she's so happy. <coughs> huh. Maybe this won't work. Um, I'm starting to stir crazy. Yeah. yeah I said, I know, Mary, you would email me about eight times a day. <laughs> All right. I guess uh, my Wi Fi isn't. Well, good to hear that she's. Good to hear. Let me share she's this with you, yeah. Parker. And, uh, yeah, I saw that um, she had signed up for the fair. I was surprised. So she can drive? And present mm -hmm. it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, her and Felicia set up the whole WRBSU table today. And it's like, we got it. Felicia's there. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, one of the things I was going to show in the spreadsheet is it has kind of our current bond payment and, and what is happening with that. Um, that's for our gym bond, and it has principal payments of 195000 this year, and then it goes down to 190000 for the last um, few years of the, the um, bond payment with the last one in FY29. Um, and it has interest on the remaining balance over that time that decreases as the remaining balance decreases. So that's the current gym bond. Um, so I guess present, Andrew? what's that? You're not able to present? No, it wasn't working. So I sent the. Oh, there was. Got it. Okay. All right. So you're going to have to make it a lot bigger because it's small numbers. But um, so on the left, you see FY20. Um, 29 is where the gym bond finishes and that first column it yeah that column is the the second column there is the gym bond payment total and so it's hundred ninety thousand dollars of principal each year but then there's interest added on to that for that total amount so our current year is FY 25 and it's 220,000 and it decreases to 190,000 so that's what we're currently paying um, and all the way on the right, there's the column, um, which are not quite all the way. The right. There's yeah, the tax impact and cents shows how much that translate to an equalized tax rate. Um, I calculated how much basically each cent 
of the tax rate translates to dollars in our budget. So for each, you know, right now in FY25, every, um, let's see, which one's FY25? Every, every one cent in the tax rates translates to $103,000 in our budget. That's equalized tax rate. If you go with the South Royalton tax rate, because of the CLA, it's $82,000 equals one cent on the South Royalton tax rate. And basically the same thing for Bethel, because our CLAs are pretty similar right now. Um, so that's kind of something that's just a, a helpful rule of thumb for how to translate between dollar amounts and what the tax rate equivalent is. Um, because we don't, you know, don't have the numbers of the yield and the equalized pupils, which is kind of what we can use to calculate what those dollar figures are. Um, I just kind of projected what the um, amount uh, each dollar would be for um, going forward to kind of get an equivalent tax rate for future years. And I just did that by increasing it by 2% annually, which is a pretty conservative increase, as you can see from, you know, previous years, it's gone up by a lot more than that um, in previous years. So, so that's what our current bond payments look like. Um, so if we go to the bond scenarios tab, oh, and this one's even smaller numbers. I should have made these bigger. Um, <clears throat> so this is looking at, um, if you go to the top, so there's kind of different scenarios of how much we'd be looking at borrowing. The rate is based on the rate that Tara had gotten for the, once she'd done our, our preview for it. Um, a couple of weeks ago. And then we can adjust the term or the, um, and the deferment is how many years we might want to delay paying down the principal. So the way that that would work is we could get the bond in, you know, starting in FY20, like get the money in FY25 in order to start paying bills and then start doing payments in FY26, but only pay print interest for a certain number of years and then start paying the principal kind of when we decide. So like that third one shows an, a version of that where we're deferring it for four years. And the idea with that, when I put that scenario together was that would make it so that the principal payments start when the gym principal payments stop. Yeah. So in that scenario, if we did $3.8 million at that rate, for 20 years, the payment winds up being the exact same amount that the principal payment for the gym bond is, and we'd be starting them principal payments as soon as the gym bond expired. Mm -hmm. um, so that, you know, we can play around with different scenarios with that if we want here um, to see what the different like amounts and terms and, and payments are. Now, clearly the rate's going to depend on what it actually is when we go to get those bonds. And also, um, the longer term we do the term, the higher the rate. So it'll add some to the rate if we do a longer term than the 20 years. Um, if you look at the combined tab, um, well, I guess let's look at the project costs first. So this was the same information that we had from EEI about the estimated costs for the each ECM. Um, so as a reminder, the PAC is 4,117,000. Um, HVAC is 296,000. That's the ventilation for the library and the science rooms. Um, the secured entrances was 642,000. Um, gym upgrades with acoustics and whatnot was 350. Stormwater abatement, 300,000. Workshop expansion. 385, um, control upgrades was 35,000, and the fuel switch was 310,000. Um, so the total was 6,436 with a 5% contingency for 6,757 total for the project. Um, if you go down a little bit, our current sources of money are. Um, the building reserve, we currently have $2,254,000 as our current balance. Um, and 
we have five hundred thousand dollars in pledged funds now, but our goal of increasing that to you know around a million or a million point two, and they're actively working on that and going to be putting together a pledge drive. So we that number should be increased, um, but that's what we currently have for pledged. Um, Performance contract day. I wanted to talk to Eric about this or ask Eric about this a little bit. The savings that were listed on the um, presentation we did last time was fourteen thousand four hundred fifty a year. So, um, how does that work with the performance contracting? Like, would so we we have um, we'll provide annual reports for you guys on updated um, your guys billing stuff. Right. So we provide the baseline where you guys are at now. And then, essentially, with the work that we do, we provide annual reports showing the energy savings. Right. Will we be able to borrow, like on the other one, we did, we paid for the project with a loan based on the performance contract. Absolutely. Absolutely. You mean, yeah, there's, op there's absolutely an option to lease. So, the, I mean, really portions of this project, if you wanted to do like the HVAC, the controls, or other portions, you would kind of just pick out what parts of the project, and then um, you could lease against that stuff. Um, typically, you're not leasing against like, a new building, like the Performing Arts Center, but the, the HVAC, pretty much all those other line items in there, um, you wouldn't have any any issues um, getting a lease for. Would the, like if we did the fuel switch, switch with that, would that amount of savings cover that item or would it just cover a portion of it, I guess is a question. Um, it would cover a portion of it, yeah. essentially. Okay. Yeah. And so, but you can do, I mean, there's no reason why you can't do a mix. So you could say, oh, you know, this portion is going to be the bond. This portion would essentially be the lease. The, the, the lease amount doesn't necessarily, the savings don't have to match how much the lease amount. It doesn't have to be a neutral amount. Right. Um, and then you could use some capital funds. And then really it's just a conversation with the leasing company. They would go out to a few different banks, get, you know, competitive lease rates from you guys which typically their interest rates are higher. Now there is another aspect of um, Vermont Bond Bank has a USDA low interest rate loan program that they've been talking about putting out for quite a while. Um, and that's a 10 year note at like a 2% interest rate. And that's for energy efficiency projects. Um, they are supposed to be finalizing that like this week, the actual okay. term program. I don't know if they can talk to them about that. I'm hoping they present it on Friday. And you present. They've been talking about it for five months, and a lot of it's been getting delayed. And uh, but we are told that they're at the finish line, so that is an option. So and that could will. do the HVAC controls and the fuel, probably, if the board wanted to consider that. Absolutely. Those yeah, are the they're things. willing to lend. Uh, I think they're maxing it. I think at like three million per customer, just because there's a lot of people in the state that they're anticipating they want mm -hmm. this. So could you just repeat? So that was like a two percent loan that on a ten year on a ten year yeah amortized for ten years yeah. okay and but we wouldn't need to bond would we be using the energy savings for it or not? So that that would also be a lease. You can have, that would uh, the way that they've structured it right now through USDA is that would be a lease that you would then own it at the completion of the payments. So it'd be very similarly structured as the other one. The only thing is that um, if you guys were to lease the other stuff through a bank, um, they're typically willing to give a longer term, usually up to like 15 or 20 years, depending on the equipment or how big the, the term is. So I know when we were looking at doing like the smaller lighting projects, um, the max term that they wanted to go is usually like seven years, just due to like the size of it. Um, and then a lot of times for like boiler projects, they're looking at 15 years. And if it's a more comprehensive HVAC upgrade, they'd be willing to go up to usually 20 years. But that's if it's over two or three million dollars that you'd be leasing. Okay. So as far as like the advantage of doing that over the bond is it seems like we'd be able to get a lower rate and um, like it would make the amount that's voted on less, but as it's still borrowing kind of basically the same as the bond except for lower interest lower interest lower yeah. interest rate shorter term so yeah. well that makes it even more complicated <laughs> but if we I just were, want to throw that out there yeah no <laughs> it's, it's good it's good but if we were thinking about 
having those two items part of the two million reserve fund anyways where there's no loan involved then right yeah i mean mm -hmm. yeah um okay so i guess if we use the i was yeah so i had that performance contracting thing as a lease which was just i i wasn't exactly sure i was just like this is down a little bit further totaling up that amount times 20 years is like that's the amount of money that you get out of it but i understand that's not exactly how the lease works so um but that's kind of included in the total there so um the remainder would be if we used all of the money used all of somehow the savings to and the fundraising at that five hundred thousand dollars amount that's how much is left over from that um that but you know if this was at the 1.2 million dollars then that brings it down to three million we do want to leave some in the building reserve you know i do think yeah. you know we talked about leaving five hundred thousand in the building reserve yeah i do wonder if we want to use a little bit more than that you know to try and you know I, I think we have been putting aside money into the building reserve kind of saying that it like these projects would be coming up so i think we could use some more um i like having a cushion yeah yeah and i just worry about projection of you know you like it may be harder and harder over time to have money to set aside that's right. mm -hmm. true true so I assume some of the money that we've been setting aside was because we had tuition that we tuition hadn't been planning. and ESSER funds. And so how about the, now that school has started, do we have a number for how many tuition we have? Off the top of my head right now? No. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's more than we budgeted for. It is. That's, yeah. yeah, so I mean, we're going to be building that fund back up. And, and one way I think we need to sell this to the community too. So at your $4.7 million bonding, all in, if it's, a four, if it's about the highest is about four hundred, just over four hundred thousand dollars a year annual payment. I saw that's four cents on the tax rate. Okay, that's just one thing for you to think about, right? Yeah. Every hundred thousand dollars is about a penny on the equalized tax rate, and you know certainly in regards to students. If I mean again, I do think one of the things we have to say to them is if four students. Four more come here each year, and our, we are gaining at least four every year right yeah. now. Um, that four is almost a penny, right? Like that's that's almost a thirty-year payment right there. Yeah. And over four years, it may pay for itself. Yeah. Then in four years, if you're gaining four kids every year, then you're you're getting really close to that that those sixteen students are going to pay your bond payment. Are you following what I'm trying mm -hmm. to say? Yeah. Um, and so I've talked to a few citizens in Bethel, and one that was a former board member, what's Greg? Greg? Oh, my neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> that he's really trying to help educate folks around that, yeah. right? And so I do think one of the things we have to do, too, as we think about all this, is how we're going to educate our community that this is an investment to increase programming for the Rudd students, but with that, hopefully attract more students in so that it ends up being, hopefully, possibly, a pretty close to a cost neutral thing. And it's not just benefiting the high school, it's gonna benefit all levels of your, your organization. So I do think that that's just one of the things we're gonna to need to really try to help educate folks on once you make the decision which way you wanna go. Because the nice thing is in your district, as far as, you know, 100,000 is a penny. It's not like we're talking about a district where, you know, 30,000 is a penny. Which smaller districts it is, it's just yeah. the way yeah. it works out. Now I was looking, so the gym bond was $3.8 million, and that was when $30,000 was a penny. So <laughs> yeah. the gym bond at the time was $0.10. Cents. Wow, that's wow. a big difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how many years ago was that? Uh, 2007. That's wow. like another good data mm -hmm. point for people, though, when, you know, yeah. to help educate folks that yeah. supported that project. Yep. Yeah, the other data point would be at one point there was a vote on the gym plus an auditorium, and if we'd voted yes then, then we wouldn't yeah. <laughs> need an auditorium now. Or it's not an auditorium, but practice space. Um, anyway, so 
with these figures in mind, um, I have the, com if you go to the combined tab, that looks at um, the current bond payments is in those middle columns, I to L, and the tax impact of those. And then the left columns would be, you know, we can change those figures to what we want them to be, but that, that's what a potential bond payment was. And I put in that 3.8 million with four year deferment to have it so that matches the gym bond principal payments and they start immediately after the current bond expires. Um, so you can see that the interest on it would be, you know, about 1.3 cents until that expires. And then once, I mean, until the principal payments kick in and then it would be about three cents after that. Um, and if you go to the right, then the combined one shows um, the N through, I don't know, Q. Yeah, yeah. Those show what the combined um, amounts of that is. So it would be around, you know, around three cents until the gym bond expires, go up to four and a half cents and then decrease from there. Um, are those numbers right? Because the, that doesn't make sense. The math. Why is the combined total more than what's over here? I must have something wrong in my spreadsheet here. So that's total. Oh, I, I see. The combined interest is is looking at the print uh, the total column instead of the interest column. Sorry, guys. Give me a second. So this should be. Well, I guess I can just drag that down. Should fix it. No. Sorry. Got a problem here. Oh, this should be E instead of F. So Nancy, I was thinking more about your question. We can definitely have that data for you next month. Uh, sorry, mm -hmm. next week. Uh -huh. um, just estimates, but just to give the board a sense, um, we we're, we did not budget for additional middle school students coming in um, over what we've normally budgeted. And you did receive 80% of the Rochester Stockbridge sixth graders that went into seventh, which was a big deal. Yeah. There's, there's yeah, I think there's eight of them. <laughs> Um, on nice. top of that, we started partnering with VTVLC at the middle school level now uh, to be the host school district for middle school. Uh, we were doing high school last year, and that has brought in an additional two students. So you, you're probably looking at at least 10 students at the middle school level alone that were not budgeted At for. about $20,000. Yeah. Yep. Nice. 99 That's... That's pretty significant. All right, I fixed it. Um, so that the correct numbers would be that it would be, you know, a little bit more than three cents before the other bond expires, and then stay under three cents after it. So, nice. yeah, that looks better. Um, and then, yeah, each because you know, as time goes on, you're dollars per cent goes up the and the payments the interest payments go down like it combines to make it so that by the end of the bond the tax rate difference is is a lot less mm -hmm. um of course who knows what the funding formula will be then and all that stuff so this is just kind of taking current law and projecting it forward but we can't really predict the future so um so I guess, uh, what do people, do people have thoughts at this point on what do you think, like, should we, does this seem like a reasonable plan? Do we want to um, play with, we could look for a longer bond or a borrowing more or less? I like this. I think you've done a great job of figuring all of that out. <laughs> okay. 
I like the one where it doesn't change at all. It just moves to the next bond. And then for taxpayers, it's easy to explain. Nothing changes. It doesn't. You know what I mean? It's just the same. I think that's easy. Right. Okay. Rodney, do you have any thoughts? Uh, I'm kind of split on it. I guess I'm just kind of thinking about it, but yeah, it all it all makes sense. About which you know, which plan we go with. So just to, you know, if we didn't defer the principal payments and had it overlap a bit, then it winds up increasing to five point two two in. Cent, like a five cent change in FY twenty six, and then you know that decreases once the um, decreases back to that around three cent change once the <coughs> gym bond expires. So, but then we're done four years earlier. So that's the the trade off there. Um, I guess if, if people do think that that's a good idea, then, you know, if looking at the kind of total funding sources, um, you know, if we do 3.8, uh, for the bond and if we're trying to leave 200,000 or 500,000 in the building reserve, that'd be using 1.7 million of it. So let's see. Three, eight, zero, zero, zero. Uh, do I have the right number of zeros? Sorry. Um, and we get somewhere around a million of fundraising. So let's see. Those two forced together are. Um, shoot. Sorry. Are five million five hundred thousand, and then if we're able to get one point two million, then that brings us to the six point seven million total. Mm -hmm. um, so that does put a lot of pressure on the fundraising to go from the five hundred thousand and finding additional fundraising sources. And if that doesn't happen, then we need to figure out what would happen at that point. <laughs> Um, you know, some of it we could do with performance contracting or leasing, but, um, yeah. Um, one other question I had for Eric was the interest payments, you know, start whenever we decide to start the bond. If we have 2 million in building reserve funds, like when will we have to be paying out some of these like your first payment yeah or like when when will oh, we actually need to get the bond and stuff yeah like that. typically what happens is the Vermont bond bank goes out for two uh, they pool all these bonds and they go out twice a year so I think it can take upwards of four to five months um, for those payments for those reserves to actually come in um, we have design time that's going to be taking place right after this bond vote passes, which is about three or four months, would actually coincide really well. A lot of times, depending on Vermont Bond Bank, sometimes a school might do like a short-term um, bridge program. But I mean, because you guys have $2 million in capital funds, I mean, there's no way that we're gonna like, spend that during the first four or five months. So you guys should be fine. I don't see why you would need to do a bridge loan. Essentially, you can just wait for those funding to come in, and as they do, um, you can pay the payment back. So that Right. I mean, I guess like the longer we you know, we're earning interest on it whenever we kind of start the bond. So the more that we can kind of delay the start of the bond, the less the interest that we wind up generating in the meantime. So, you know, if we can get approved for the bond, but have it start in like, you know. After we spend the $2 million. <laughs> yeah, after we spend the $2 million. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I mean, we can certainly talk about how that works. I don't really care where the funding, where our payment comes from, or 
what funding source it comes from. Right. And then for you guys, I think if you guys were looking at supplementing some of that with a lease, the, I don't think there's there's nothing that says that, oh, you need to do that on December 1st when you want to sign the contract for the main part portion. Like you could sit there and say, hey, we're going to bond and build the Performing Arts Center in 2025 into 2026, and then, you know, come back in 2025 and get a lease and complete the HVAC in here, the control upgrades, so then you're not paying interest on that stuff early. Right. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, essentially you would go out for that mm -hmm. stuff as you need the funds. Um, but as far as, like, once we get the approval from the voters, then we could... Uh, there was the December pool or the May pool, but we could do the May pool probably because we wouldn't need the funds until that later. Yeah, I would think that. May okay. pool funds usually, if approved, they're usually funds in August is what Bond Bank said. Oh, then you should be fine. Yeah, there's no way. With your capital reserves, yeah, I don't see. We're not going to spend 30% of the project in the first three months of the job. Okay. Did I visit long enough? You came up with a decision? <laughs> well, kind of. I, I had a question. I was, when you were talking a minute ago about um, the fundraising. So in those numbers that you were doing, that that included that $1.2 million in fundraising? Yeah, so in the project costs, um, like if if we take 3800000 for a bond, Mm -hmm. And we have one million seven hundred from the building reserve that leaves five hundred thousand. Then we're at five hundred and fifty thousand, or five million five hundred thousand in total funds from those two sources. Okay. And the total project is six million seven hundred thousand, so that would leave one point two to get from fundraising and or leases. Yeah, it it just seems like kind of. Like you were saying, pressure to right. on people to fundraise. That seems like a lot of money. It does seem like a lot of money. So, yeah, I, I mean, I I think based on all the reaching out that's been going on, I would not want to bank on more than seven hundred and fifty right now. Okay. okay. That's probably me being conservative. I just that would be my advice, and I'm saying bank on. We're still waiting to get from the cops grant too. Yeah, that is. Which which is crickets right now, but I will have I will put a feeler out about that. We did apply for a cops grant, which right, is a federal that might grant, provide some which what is going to provide essentially one hundred and fifty thousand a year over four years to support the security upgrades. So that would be another fund of money that mm -hmm. we might be able to tap into to do that work in the upcoming years. But I'm just thinking we know we have five hundred thousand donors. We know we have two other donors that have certainly indicated they want to donate. I don't. Ex I, ex I expect those to be pretty significant donations. So I'm not. I'm not banking on like smaller donations, okay. right? When I said 750, mm -hmm. I think I'm, I feel optimistic at this point that through three large donations that we would hit the 750 mark. Okay. And, and then, then everything else just goes else toward it. But about. you know what I mean? Like I just. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, to make, I mean, it's hard to get that sounds hundreds better. of thousands right with hundred dollar donations. Or yeah, it does seem like I I liked um, you know Chris had the idea at some point of like you know we kind of provide the base and then you can fundraise for kind of upgrades the the, the upgrades like so we have the gym upgrades portion of it which is three hundred fifty thousand so if like we basically commit to doing everything but save those for kind of the fundraising, mm -hmm. um, you know, either small donations or some of the large donations. But so if we, if we say we're getting 750 from, um, you know, those large donations, that would leave 500,000, 500,000, which, you know, some of that we could we would have the five hundred thousand dollars of building reserves, so like we could absorb some of that with the building reserve, do some of that from the smaller donor fundraising, and maybe some from performance contracting with the lease improvements. Well, especially if we think the USDA lease is coming through. 
Yeah, I'm hoping they're going to be at our meeting on Friday and they provide updates. So I'm hoping because it has been talked about almost every month that they will provide some form of update so I could report out Tuesday night if they do provide an update because Michael comes there to the meeting on Friday okay. from Bond Bank. So I guess the question now, since it seems like everybody's on board with basically 20 year term and kind of doing mimicking the school gym bond, but with this bond of 20 year term, 3.8 million. Well, I guess the question is, is 3.8 million enough for the bond or do we need to, like, do you think we want to increase that to try and make sure that we're covering the full amount or does it seem like if we do 3.8 million we'll be able to come up with it from fundraising, doing a little more from the building reserve if needed, or leasing. Hmm. I'd like to think we could come up with it and keep it at 3.8. Yeah. But I have no idea. Yeah. We were projecting some surplus from last year too that you guys could ask the voters to put into mm. your capital fund. Uh, sounds like we used a, a lot of that for the... We did use some, right, for some summer That's right. stuff. So, yeah. Um, Rodney, do you have thoughts at this point on 3.8 as, as a number? Yeah, I, I think, uh, <clears throat> yeah, if we're trying to estimate the donations a little too high there, uh, I don't know. I think we'd have to borrow a little bit more than three point eight. Okay. Um, what would you feel comfortable with? Um, Rodney, do you have a number that you would feel more comfortable with? No, I was just trying to calculate a little bit, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I just uh, I just want to make make sure we don't dip into our reserve fund too much. I guess that's all. Right. So, yeah, I guess we should talk a little bit. So the, we have the kind of the 10 year or <coughs> longer term maintenance plan. And when we were looking at that, the main expense that we think would be coming up eventually would be window replacement, right? But other than that, we're in pretty good we're shape. We're gonna be in really good shape. Yeah. Um, and did we have kind of an estimate on when the window replacement, we were thinking of that happening? Well, the thought was, I mean, we're put, that we would put away money over the, like, essentially the next 10 years. And 10 that years. Would be close to covering. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm just thinking so. If I remember right, I mean, the window replacement was like a million bucks. Right. In today money. <laughs> yeah, that's today. <laughs> um, but the price might go down in ten years. <laughs> but in in over ten years, we'll just from the forty thousand we put every year in our budget, that'll be four hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. You know, presumably we'll have some surplus funds. Hopefully, <laughs> if we keep getting those tuition students. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hopefully, we'll be able to add to it from surplus funds as well. So, you know, 
if we keep 500,000 plus 400,000, like we're already at a million basically. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think I'd be comfortable with if we like using, leaving 300,000 in the reserve fund if need be. Um, and that would leave 300,000 and then we could do a lease for the, um, you know, basically do the fuel switch with uh, a lease, and that would be the other three hundred thousand. You know, hopefully we don't. I ideally we don't need to do the lease, and then we can just use the savings to help lower our tax rate. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, not that you know, it's not that much, but um, but that would be a way of paying for. You know, still leave three hundred thousand in the reserve fund. Be able to pay for it if we didn't get anything more than the seven hundred fifty thousand. And you haven't figured in any of the other money that Tara's talking about either. Right. If we so, got if we got one hundred fifty thousand dollars in grants, that would definitely help too. Yeah, and that's and this is based on contingencies. I mean, the hope is as we as we bid this out and stuff. My hope is that it's this less, whole thing right? may end up being less. I mean, that would be my hope. Right, and then we're not having to dip in as much. Right. Yeah. I mean, if it comes in, I mean, my experience with EI in general is that they've been good on their numbers, and they have not always hit the high end. Okay. So yeah, if it comes in without that five percent contingency, then like we're basically there without dipping into the reserves. And a four million bond gives you an additional 10,000 in principle. Right. So, yeah, if we... Which isn't much. Yeah. Tough to say. Yep, so that would make the payment $200,000. And then interest, that rate was 4.44. If we did 3900 that would be a $195,000 payment, which is what the lease payment has been is is this upcoming year and has been for the last 10 so it drops down to 190,000 for the last 4 years but it has been 195 so it'd still be kind of equivalent mm -hmm. <laughs> and we can also refinance bonds after 10 years if interest rates go back down right is it is it is 10 years cuz it looked like the gym bond eight was 8 to 10 years you can like when I was looking at th up this on the bond bank website, it had it starting at 2012 when it was voted in 2007. So I wonder if that was yeah. So they at at usually between eight and ten years. Okay. If rates have gone down. We potentially refinance them. Right. From the bond bank, that's what they've said. Obviously, the rates quote we don't Being optimistic about our future. <laughs> I guess where do where do people want to go from here? You want a motion? We don't need a motion tonight. No. We really just need direction to drop your resolution mm -hmm. and your warning, and then you'll take action next meeting. And on so all I those can get things. final debt service schedules from the bond bank, so I have real numbers you know, mm -hmm. to give you based on our plan on Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. And then what you'll see is the resolution really speaks out to here's the, all the different work you're doing, and then your warning will say you're going to do this this amount of project, but you're only bonding this amount of money okay. is how the warning works it. So by next Tuesday, my goal would be hopefully, so that you don't have to have a special meeting, it is that, but we do have some leeway just so you know, like we're good time-wise. If for some reason we didn't have it all finalized by our attorney, we got about a week or two to do a special meeting if needed, but that we would have, um, all set your warning, you could see what your ballot language would look like, you'd see what the resolution looks like, and um, I've already met with both your town clerks, we've already identified the five posting locations, um, and then we have to post it three straight Thursdays in the paper. Um, the one thing that we're going to need to know is when we want to hold, we should, we should decide this tonight, when we want to hold the actual informational meeting. 
that has to happen you know within 10 days of the vote because that date needs to go on the warning um, and certainly we can hold more than that right but we, we need to identify in the warning when that one is okay and the town clerks are good they are set on the polling locations they're set to commingle the votes they're gonna um, plan to actually count them the day after the election and we um, got approval from the secretary a state's office that they have up to 24 hours to count them and when I met with them I didn't think that you guys would object allowing them to do it in the morning because they're going to be counting for the presidential elections mm -hmm. yeah. and stuff that day that and they, they were very relieved by that <laughs> so yeah. I didn't think you guys would have a problem no, no. <laughs> we'll be on the edge of our seats for 24 I know. hours I thought but, about that mm. too but. we can we can deal yeah, yeah. <laughs> Probably be paying it on the edge of our seats anyway. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Yes, maybe, yes. Regardless of the bond. Um, okay, uh, so I guess where, what direction do we want to give? I think I would lean towards the $3.8 million, 20 year term, four year deferment. But if we want to do 3.9 to kind of match what the current payment is, or if people are more comfortable with 4 million, we can. Look at that as well, or something else. Personally, I like the three eight with the four year deferment. Okay. Seems like the least impactful. Me too. Peggy, thoughts? I always hate paying extra interest. Yeah. Unless mm -hmm. we borrow. For four years. That's how much money. Oh, defer for four years? If you defer four years, how, yeah. much, how much total, how much each, has that added to our project? Each year, it's $145,000 of interest well, before we start paying off. Like, so yeah. each year we add, it's 145000 So you're adding a chunk of change. It's true. Mm -hmm. trying to be fiscally responsible. Sometimes it's better to just do it and get it over with. But what was the difference? It was going to be like a, almost a six cent? Um, <coughs> all right, so if we're back to three million, um, yeah, and we're not doing any deferment, then it would be 5.22 cents. So it's basically a three cent increase when we start doing principal payments. Um, you know, with just interest, it's about a 1.34 cents, just the interest payment. Um, but if we add in the principal, then it... And, but that wasn't combined, right? Right, so on, on the combined one, this is deferred, uh, this is not deferred. Um, so yeah, it basically adds about um, adds about two cents more on the the years that we're overlapping because that's basically the difference between the hundred ninety thousand dollars in that payment or not. Makes sense. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, and we're done four years earlier. And you know, I suppose the advantage of that one is. Then that year where it drops, we'd be able to, you know, say that you know we we're dropping the tax rate by three cents from what it was, or two cents. Can't yeah. read it very well. About two cents, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I did like how how nice and smooth it was, though. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the idea I like is that people will see that you know there's not going to be it's not going to impact them. Right. Um, if you go to the current bonds tab, one thing that was kind of interesting is if, and look at the tax impact column. So this year, which was, or this budget cycle was FY25, so it's a 2.13 cents, but if we just go back, you know, a few more, it's up to like, you know, 5.46 when we first merged, or yeah, back when it was first passed, it was... You know, upwards of ten cents. Wow. So, 
So if we look at it in the historical context, going up to five isn't that big a <coughs> deal. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know. I still like keeping it below, you know, kind of even with what we currently are doing. <coughs> So Peggy, you're on on no deferment. Is your right. vote okay? I mean, because that's over. What half a million? Yes, about a half we're a million. spending extra interest. Yeah. That's yeah, I I, was, I would have to agree with Peggy on that. I, I don't care for deferring the payment. It's just spending a half a million dollars in interest for. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess one reason I would argue for deferring maybe one or two years is we do know that the upcoming budget cycles are, you know, it's, this isn't the most opportune time for doing this. Not that there is ever, you know, times when the schools are flush with cash and, and you know, everybody's happy to pay more. Um, but it does seem like the we are going to be facing some difficult, particularly next year, is going to be a difficult budget year. And so if we have it, kind of the full amount hit in next year, that's going to be potentially a harder sell or, you know, it'll be more difficult than if it's, so I, you know, maybe we don't do the full four year deferment, but what about deferring for one year so that it starts in FY 27 instead of FY 28 or FY 26, which is next year. It's budget cycle. So if we did that, it would be 3.42 for next year and then go to 5.04 for the year after. And then we'd have a year of overlap, two years, three years of overlap, and then it would be dropping or defer for one or two years instead of four years. What do you think, guys think about that? I'd be willing to compromise at one, but that's my limit. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see what two looks like. So if we get to two, then we never go above a five cent impact. I understand not wanting to pay interest, but you know, there are times when it makes sense to pay interest. I don't know. I hate to spend extra money. It's just it's a lot of extra money to the project, and people are already <coughs> hurting as it is. Sure. That's that's my theory. Man calls me cheap all the time, so that's the way. <laughs> where, uh, where do you guys sit? Oh, I'd, I'd, I'd compromise with maybe, maybe a year. One year I'd rather two do years. two years. <laughs> two years. I and mean, that would be a real compromise to go from four to zero to four. Two's halfway in between. Okay. Rodney, what, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I guess I'm okay with deferring it like one year, maybe two. Okay. Really? I'd still like to defer four, but I would compromise it too. I feel like keeping it the same overall. In the big picture, taxes maybe will stay more of the same and make voters happier. That was my thinking. Yeah. Yeah. I'm but I still think two on, is okay. I'm still on that fence, but. Yeah. So can we compromise it too, or? Uh... I'm willing to lose. <laughs> 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 it's not losing. It's not losing. Okay. Do we? Yes. Yeah, compromise. <laughs> not not lose. I'm losing my beautiful, smooth, no, smooth yeah. graph there. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, I won't go home and cry too much. <laughs> oh, good, good. So, are we on a consensus now at 
3.8 for 20 years, deferring two years, hopefully getting it in the May pool. And, and then we'll see where we're at with fundraising and what we need to do with a lease. If we need to do lease payments or what we get with grants, we'll kind of figure it out. But this is what we're asking for for a bond. And just so I'm just so uh, folks aren't surprised when you see the warning, just a reminder, it will say, Tara, correct me if I'm wrong, but based on our attorney, it'll say that we're doing a total project of this amount. We're only requesting to bond this amount. So I guess that's the other question is what do we want to ask for for the total amount? Do we ask for the 6.7 million as the total amount and we're only bonding 3.8? Or do we ask for just the Performing Arts Center of 4.1, but we're bonding 3.8 of that? I I would be, you know, it seems to me that the total project is 6.757. And if, if we don't get the bond, then we're kind of going back to the drawing board and figuring out what is going to happen. So, you know, we will do some of these things, but a lot of it would, it's not like we're going to do everything but the PAC. Um, if the bond goes down, we would. I think it helps you with your informational to be able to speak to everything you're doing, not just the P, you yeah. know what I mean? I do like yeah. the idea of helping the voters see like, this is not just about a performing arts center. Yeah. You're going to get a performing arts center, but you're also going to get school safety upgrades. You're going to get improved air quality. Yeah. You're going to expand the shop. Like I think being able to have folks see that it's more than just the performing arts center, I I think for some voters they're going to say, "Wow!" Like for three point eight, that feels like a lot. I hope. So yeah. can we do that? Can we say so, that yes. we're we're asking three point eight? But this is what you're getting for it, but kind of not saying that where the rest of the money's coming from. So this was our attorney's response to that exact question. Okay. <laughs> if the PAC is the whole project, then the answer is an easy yes. We would be presenting just the PAC project with the offsetting and funding, and then the total what we are bonding. If the PAC is only one element of a larger project, but the school board wants only the PAC to be bond funded, the ballot would need to reflect that limitation so that voters understand or should understand that a yes vote on the bond endorses the PAC and the bond funding for it, while a no vote does the opposite. It may be cleaner if the voters were asked separate questions. One, endorsing the project elements that are not bond funded, and a second seeking endorsement of the bond funded PAC and authority to issue bonds in support of it. Well, I mean, at this, like what we were just talking about was treating it as the whole thing as one project and just doing, so the 3.8 isn't necessarily for the PAC. Correct. It's for. Yep. So that was his feedback comment. So I think when we present this to the attorney, we have to be very clear. Like this is where all of it's coming from so that he can word it exactly the way we need it to be worded in the resolution. Yep. Looking at it as a project in a whole. Whole yeah, I definitely think we minutes. want to show them all the ECMs. Yeah. Yeah. So I do think that that needs to be very clearly outlined mm -hmm. in our resolution, which is your presentation saying this is why we feel this is a necessity and this is what we are supporting for a project. Mm -hmm. Is the, so if we say $6.7 million total project, do we need to list, like, one of the things we need to do is come up with a better name for this thing. Well, the, the warning's going to literally say every ECM. Yeah. Okay. So the resolution says, essentially the way I just wrote this, it's going to say to do school safety. Like the voters see that in the resolution. Yep. Right. It's posted. Just it's going to be. <laughs> it, it's, it is long. Yes. Yeah, even, Super long. long. Yeah. No, the Several resolutions pages. are long. But yeah, but I was wondering if we could do something along the lines of like, do you approve the phase two of the building imp or the building warning language well, is incredibly so, specific. Which includes and then list every single ECM. Like could we give it an overall project name that we're referring to it everywhere and then have it also list the ECMs as individual parts of the overall project. The resolution is gonna list every individual part. Right. Well that's what I mean. It's like I you I think can it, call it what you want. The the state statute for how we warn bonds 
is just right. like incredibly. I just mean like, is it possible to include whatever we decide to call it elsewhere, also, kind of, in before the list of things? Like it's just going to say a capital improvement project is what it's going to say. Okay. Okay, well, that's that's a good name. Yeah. I mean, I think we can market it however right. you I want mean, to market it. Right, you can. It, I mean, the, the bond yeah, no, question, I just, it says, often the ballot <coughs> item for a bond will identify a project that is X million and seek authorization for bonding of Y million. Yeah. Okay, okay. so, so we do that, have to have the 6.7 yes. million right. yeah. in we're there. We're asking for bonding of 3.8 million. My fear is that some people are only going to see 6.7 million and stop and say no. <laughs> um, all right, well, we certainly have a lot of educational meetings to do, outreach to do. Well, I was going to anyway. suggest, too, and it will be on your agenda next week. I mean, I do think the way you did a flyer, the type of yeah. flyer we did to help correct folks on the budget that they right. voted, that type of flyer is the angle I think we should go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, my general thought was that we need to make, like, eight of those flyers, like one for the overall project, one for just the Performing Arts Center, you know, like each yeah. aspect of it. Like have, like, like have one come out every two weeks or something yeah. talking about it. It's going to be a lot of work, but um, anyway, are we, do we have consensus on the amount that we're asking to bond? I guess let's start with, do we have consensus that we're going to ask for, like in the bond warning, say the total project is as the total project, so six point seven million is the total project. Rodney, does that sound good? Yeah, that, that I think that'll work. Okay, so total project is six point seven, three point eight as the bond bond amount. Is that do we have consensus on that at this point? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Twenty year term, I think we're consensus. Two year deferment. Mm hmm. Everybody happy? Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. Okay. Tara, is there anything else you need from us as far as that aspect of it, the bond? I will email Michael tonight and ask for an updated debt service schedule. I'm going to know we're shooting for May bond pool. Okay. And we'll get yeah, the I mean, info the, to the attorney. We'll send you all the draft as soon as we get it. Um, <coughs> and then, Andrew, if you have questions, what we did for Sharon is we just set up a brief meeting with the attorney, our board chair. Tara and I just to review all that prior okay. to the that meeting. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, I do think, I think you sense. know if we can delay whenever the funding date of that bond is. Yeah, I mean you could even go to December bond pool if we're gonna utilize capital reserve funds to pay the initial yeah. payments. So I mean, we don't have to go to May bond pool. Right. We could go our bond gets approved in November, project starts in April. When's your, May, most likely. So May, first several months of funding comes from reserve. We go for December bond pool. By May, we will have project costs in place, and I will have a, a payment schedule in your guys' hands. So that at that point, you guys can really kind of determine. A lot of times what I've seen other schools do is if it's a long period of time, like say my payments are coming some of it until 2026 they'll take those bond funds and they'll put it in an interest bearing cd or something like that um which had been paying really good rates of return for quite a while right. so <laughs> they're not as good as they were but some people are making a lot of money off just bonds and bank accounts. yeah no i i'm more thinking for the informational meetings coming up like if the projections that I just had in this spreadsheet had the first year, basically, we get fun, you know, the, the interest starts accruing in, in June. Whereas if we could push that back to November or whenever, you know, we can have the, the later we can start the interest, the lower that first amount of interest is in FY26, you know, so like. Yeah, I mean, I would just verify that with Mike and make sure that there's no period of how long you have to wait in between it and stuff but for us like i said i can certainly provide you guys with a projected cost payment schedule through the duration right yeah so that would be helpful if we could get that kind of before we start do you want that soon yes yep because yeah. that. that would let us kind of like say you know 
try and decrease that first interest as much as we can. I can have something to be by end next week. So just again, from Bond Bank, August bond pool, or May bond pool gets funded in August. Okay. December bond pool gets funded on or around March 1st. Okay. So I guess the question is, will we have enough funds to make it to March, or will we need it by August? Or that, that's a question for you. We, and that would be a question. We draw down in August. Yeah, we can we can have that conversation. Now we have an investment policy. I can invest. Mm -hmm. That's true. Hopefully, at more than three point seven two percent or whatever it winds up being. <laughs> I'll let you know tomorrow. I'm going to look at some interest rates. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the other thing is theoretically interest rates are going to go down. They're further. going to be changing. Hopefully next week. Yep. Um, okay. So that seems like Tara's got what she needs. I think we have consensus on what we're doing. Um, so I'm going to share, just so you're aware, my next step. I'm going to share with our attorney each of those funding structures that we just talked about so that he has all of that detail, as well as the bond banks. So they have all of that detail. So where, why we're going from <coughs> 6 7 to the 3 8 just so you know. Mm -hmm. We share all of that. We give him the ECM matrix. So they have all of that detail. Okay. To write this up. Right. Um, okay. So now I guess we need to figure out when the when we want to do our informational meeting. Ten days within ten days of the vote. You know, normally, if it was you know the, like we usually do our annual meeting the day before town meeting, so like we could do the Monday before voting, but I, I don't know with the, the, being a national election if we want to do it that close to the national vote or... Why don't we do it the week before, the Tuesday night before? So November 5th would be the bond vote. So, are you saying like the Monday before, the Tuesday before, or? Yeah, the, t the week before. So, October 29th would be the Tuesday. Yeah. We were going to have the S Chomp board meeting. Huh. Um. I think the SU board meeting is going to get moved that night. So, that what night will be available? It won't be. Won't be. Okay. Yeah, I mean, what, like, do we think just doing it the night before the actual vote, is that a bad idea? Or is, it doesn't stop you do from doing Yeah, I mean, we're going to have, prior. we're going to certainly have more before. Okay, now I have a question. We have early voting. I was just going to ask the same early thing. Early voting for elections. Do, is it, does, I talked to your school election. Early I talked to your town clerk. We're going to warn this. They can request an absentee ballot. These are not getting mailed out to everybody. So it's November fifth is the vote. Yeah. yeah. So they could request an absentee ballot. Uh huh. But this is why you're going to need to do informational meetings prior. Yeah. This is just the official one by statute. Yeah. That I need to have a date and time for the warning. We'd have to move on to meetings. Yeah, we'll figure. Um, I mean, is I'm there, I, I think maybe it does make sense to do this one like the week before then, and then like another two weeks before that or something, or multiple, I don't know. Should we do one here and then yes. one in Bethel? Yeah, definitely. So um, we've got our, our regular school board meeting September 17th. Mm-hmm. We've got a regular school board meeting October 15th. November 5th. So the October 15th is three weeks before. So we certainly could do. And where's certainly our. Certainly do a presentation then. Yeah. When, where's our uh, board meeting on the 15th? Do we know? Like, what's our next board meeting next week? We're here again We're here next, next week, week. So we'll be in Bethel. We'll be in yeah. Bethel. So we did Bethel on the 15th. And then we can't do the 29th because that was SU meeting. You said it had to be within 10 days? Yeah, so you, you're open that Monday or you could do the 30th. 
So you wouldn't be able to do it on the 15th? No, no. You can do one on the 15th. You okay. just need to pick one. Oh, just one of them has mm -hmm. to be to one. be on the okay. morning. Just the one. Okay. Um, does anybody care 28th or 30th? I should actually look at my calendar. Uh, yeah, look at my doesn't calendar. make any difference to me. This is the one I just have to have up. Yeah, okay. And it doesn't even mean you couldn't warn another one that week if you chose. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah, just, yeah, I'm good too. Then we tear Monday versus Wednesday? I prefer Wednesday. I have a standing meeting on Mondays. All right. Let's, let's say Monday or Wednesday the 30th. Here? Yes. Here. Because we'll do that too. Um, and we'll, so that's all we need for the actual warning. Yep. What time? Uh, I don't know. Stick with our 7 p.m.s? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I think on the 15th it'll be earlier than 7 p.m. because we have our, this meeting at 7. Oh, right. Um, so 6.30? Is that enough time? Um, yeah, for... For the fifteenth, I mean, right now we're talking about the thirtieth, though, where we're not. Okay. Yeah. We don't right, have. We don't have to warn. Them. Right. So on the thirtieth, do we want to do seven or do we want to have something different? I don't care at that point because we're done with soccer, so. <laughs> Doesn't matter to me. Doesn't matter. Stick with well, seven. Sure. Yeah. Seven o'clock, <clears throat> October thirtieth. Um, and why don't, so I think at our next board meeting, like at the September meeting, we can kind of plan out the rest of the rollout. That's sort of, I, unless there's things to add, I had that as a big chunk of your discussion right. for next week too. Perfect. Just, I think to flesh out a calendar almost. I think it should be until, until the vote is done. Me too. <laughs> it's going to be a big chunk of our meeting. What about... What about like at open house, like when there's a captive audience? Is oh, there definitely, a, yeah. And I mean, that's going to be how soon? I know we had an email on it. Open house oh, 26. Uh, for yeah. for here, good. and it's sooner than that, I think, yeah, at the elementary and the middle schools. But it'd be great if we could corral everybody mm -hmm. into the gym at those open houses for even 10 minutes just to tell them that there's well, going to be an information meeting. At 7 that night, I wonder, in our open houses, Oh, you've got a concert this soon. Yeah, October 2nd. So after open house, we go into the gym for the concert. So I don't know if you want to... Oh, yeah. We should take advantage every time there's going to be a, a large group of people. Yeah. Because they're not going to come to these informational meetings. All right. Um, anything else we should discuss tonight? Or uh, are we... All set at this point. Okay. I think we okay. have a sort of plan, and we'll make more of a plan on next week. Do you need a motion to adjourn? I believe we do. Well, so no, we, we're going to do public comment because there's no oh, public there's comment. Oh, there's public comment, yes. There anybody a public comment want to make public comment? Okay, then I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. <laughs> Second. Great. Thanks, everybody.